everybody. This is a video about kinematics and specifically in module one. So we're going to be defining kinematics terms, talking about what kinematics is, which is what is going on, describing the motion of an object, fully describing it, but not worrying about why. We'll worry about why in module six and in module seven, where we get into forces and Newton's laws. But right now we're just interested in the what's going on. And so we'll get into that in quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of detail. So today's t-shirt is from the Muppets. We have Beaker and Professor Honeydew. So I love the Muppets. So anyway, that's today's science t-shirt. And now we'll get right to it. All right, here you can see some snail races. Uh, did not know that was a thing, but in any case, uh, I think that's pretty close to a one dimensional uh, motion, which is what we're studying in modules one, two, and three, one dimensional kinematics. And then later we'll get into 2D kinematics in module four. All right, before we get into the kinematics terms, let's talk about what scalars and vectors are. Scalars have magnitude and vectors have magnitude and direction. So what's something that just has magnitude? Well, mass, uh, temperature, and volume. Uh, volume is a great example, pretty easy to understand. I've got a gallon of milk downstairs. There's, it doesn't make any sense for that to have a direction, okay? So volume, one gallon in that case, doesn't have a direction. Uh, vectors, on the other hand, something like acceleration, uh, momentum, force, do have direction. And so force is, is probably the easiest one of those to understand. A force is a push or a pull. Like I said, we won't really get into to that until uh, module six, but everybody can understand what a push is. And if I push on something, uh, like if I push on my calculator to the left, then it might cause it to fall off the desk, which it probably would. But if I push down on it, it's not gonna have the same effect. So the direction matters. So specifying how big the force is, but also what direction it's acting, both important. So uh, force is a vector. All right, now into the terms. Uh, position is an example of a vector. It's where something is relative to a given reference point. So for example, we have our teacher here and she has an initial position, which is X sub zero, meaning at time zero, and a final position at X sub F, okay? Now, why is her initial position 1.5 meters and not zero? Well, it's relative to a given reference point. So I didn't create this graphic, so I don't know what they were thinking, but my interpretation is, well, maybe, it's, maybe she's 1.5 meters away from her desk, okay? So that's where she started. The desk is easy to measure from, so, We'll use that as our reference point. Now I said position is a vector. Yeah, because it has direction. She starts off 1.5 meters to the right of her desk. She could have started over here, 1.5 meters to the left of, well, of this edge of the desk. So she could have been over here and then she would have a negative position. All right, and, and that negative sign meaning to the left of. All right, now displacement, is the change in the position of an object. And change in is represented with a Greek symbol delta, which looks like a triangle. And whenever you see delta in this course, it's always going to be calculated as final minus initial of whatever it is. In this case, it's the change in position. So it's delta x. So it's final position x sub f minus initial position x sub zero. Okay, in that case, in this case, it's two meters. And it's positive two meters because she ended up two meters to the right of where she started. Okay, if she had started here and ended here, her displacement would have been negative two meters. All right, either way, whether she went left to right or right to left, her distance traveled, which is a scalar, is two meters either way. Okay, and then in parentheses here, I put the SI units for each of these, and it's two meters in all cases. All right, let's look at another example to help us understand the dis difference between distance traveled and displacement. 
We have an object starts here, goes three kilometers to the left. That's a couple of miles. And then the object goes two kilometers to the right. Well, the distance traveled was five kilometers, three kilometers to the left, two kilometers to the right, total of five kilometers. But the displacement, if we look at the final position right here compared to the initial position, the object ended up one kilometer to the left. So the delta x for the whole motion is negative one kilometers. Okay. So hopefully that shows you that the distance traveled and displacement can not only be different signs, but they can actually be different numbers as well. That's not always obvious when we just look at simple examples like this, where both the distance traveled and the displacement are two meters. Okay, but this one gives you the difference, uh, shows you the difference where the distance traveled was five kilometers, the displacement, again, for the whole motion, which includes both components, was negative one kilometers. All right, more kinematics terms. And actually, we're going to talk about time first, which is not a kinematic term, it's just a term. Well, it's used in calculating various kinematics quantities like velocity and speed and acceleration. So we need to have a good handle on it. So a lot of times we'll use delta time, which is, like I said, always final minus initial. So TF minus T naught. But there's a simplification because most of the time, almost always, the initial time, we're just going to call zero. The starting time will be zero which is what they say right here. This is just a snippet from your textbook. And if the initial time is zero, then delta T becomes TF minus zero or just TF. And then if you're just only at one time, maybe we could just call it T, which is what your book suggests. And, and a lot of textbooks do, I think maybe all of them. Um, and so the time is just T. And so that's pretty standard. Um, now, that being said, some of the definitions still have TF and T naught in them. So average velocity, you can see here, it's how fast an object's moving and in what direction. So scalar or vector, that's right, it's a vector. And it's calculated as displacement, which is delta x over time. Okay. Average speed, on the other hand, is distance traveled divided by elapsed time. An example to help you understand the difference between average speed and average velocity, we have somebody who leaves their house, they go three kilometers this direction, we'll call that the positive direction. And then they go three kilometers back in the negative direction, and they end up in the same place. Well, they traveled six kilometers, that's the distance traveled. And it says down here, it took them 30 minutes and 30 minutes is half an hour or 0 0.5 hours. So six kilometers divided by half an hour is 12 kilometers per hour. That's the average speed. However, if we look at the displacement for the whole trip, well, the final position is here and the initial position was here. So that means the displacement was zero. So displacement of zero divided by half an hour, well, that's zero. The average velocity is zero. All right, so that's average speed versus average velocity. Now let's look at instantaneous versions of these terms. So most of the time, we're, we're going to be concerning ourselves with the instantaneous velocity. So how do we define that? Well, we just look at smaller and smaller time frames, And so use a mathematical tool called a limit. And we look at when delta t goes to 0. And so that might seem a little bit weird. But if we're, we'll look at some position versus time graphs, and you'll see that this instantaneous velocity is equivalent to the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. So that, that hopefully it'll make more sense when you see it, but it's how fast something was going at a particular time. Now there's not as much difference between instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed as there was between average speed and average velocity. These are always instantaneous versions are always gonna be the same number. It's just that this is the absolute value or magnitude of the instantaneous velocity, okay? Whereas before we could have different numbers like 12 kilometers per hour for the average speed and zero for the average velocity. 
But since we're doing it as delta t goes to zero, there's no chance for something to go one direction and then another direction. So the magnitudes of instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speeds are going to be the same. All right, one more term, which is average acceleration. So the average acceleration is defined as delta v over delta t. Remember, delta is always final minus initial. And then let's just go ahead and put instantaneous acceleration there, which is similarly using a limit as delta t goes to zero of delta v over delta t. But really, we don't need to worry about this because in this course, we're going to be looking at time periods where the acceleration is constant. So then there's, there's no difference between average and instantaneous acceleration because we're only looking at constant acceleration time periods. All right, and that's a good place to stop. Um, and then I'll pick up and I'll do another module one video coming up.